movement of outside left is rising. Everyday people, much like you and me, unify to take action and advocate for a more fair and equal world. Illuminating every corner of the planet and embodying the very best of humanity. With recent years being overshadowed by doom, gloom, and daily body counts. The tales of Axandas have always been here. Ordinary people doing extraordinary acts of purpose and courage. In the words of Malala, you sat side when the whole world is silent. Even one voice becomes powerful. Hello, I'm Jessica Hickman, and I'm on a mission to build a generation of Axanders. One person, one voice, and one action at a time. I'm doing this by addressing a silent threat called bystanding. Because I believe that this behavior poses the greatest threat to our world. Bystanding, by definition, is a passive inaction a conscious choice to stay passive in the face of injustice. Bystander poses many threats to our world and is one of the reasons why one in three youths grapple with daily bullying, while workplaces are rife with psychological harm and violence. Bystander contributes to why one in three 736 million in total women endure persistent physical and sexual violence. And tragically, bystanding contributes to why almost 52 million children may not make their fifth birthday in the next decade. Because much of the world chooses to bystand and overlook this plight. What I want you to know today is that bystanding causes a threat to our world, and bystanders hold the power to break the chains of injustice and end this tapestry of despair and suffering, breaking the chains of injustice, addressing these statistics and more, ending human suffering. For you, the word bystanding may be familiar, but for me, it took a personal experience. In 2017, I found myself in Australia, on the other side of the world from friends and family, in a hospital bed, burned out, and diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder from workplace harm. For three and a half years, I had suffered persistent and relentless workplace bullying from my manager, who bullied and harassed me day in, day out. I would endure gender-based slur, physical intimidation, emotional and psychological mistreatment, desk nudging, and the list goes on. In fact, I have reported this behavior 32 times. 32 times to people that have the power to stop the mistreatment immediately if they had chose to. Unfortunately, the resolution went into the too hard basket and it never came. 10 to 13 colleagues would witness the mistreatment day in, day out. While sympathetic, they would look the other way. And business leaders would say things such as, it's not my problem, someone else will deal with it. Unfortunately, it took hospitalization for me to realize the impact and complexities with bystanding behavior. Traumatized, I moved to the other side of the country to rebuild my life, to heal, but to go on my mission to highlight why bystanding poses the greatest threat to our world. And if I think about my story alone, unfortunately, bystanding or bystanders aren't limited to my story. In fact, they influence and impact every corner of our global society. Let's take the example of Harvey Weinstein, a once powerful Hollywood figure, now convicted as a serial sex offender. 
His behavior was known as an open secret. It was tolerated, accepted, and protected. In fact, there were agreements in place that if he was accused of sexual violence, that he would pay victims and target out of his own funds. Now, this story is shocking, right? But the tragic truth is that there lays a dormant, silent bystander within all of us, choosing and opting to remain silent, becoming the greatest threat to our world. But I want you to know today that you have the power to break the chains of this injustice and speak up. Well, why do people remain bystanders? Let me introduce you to a concept called the bystander effect. The bystander effect was coined by social psychologists Viv Glantine and John Darling following the 1964 murder of a lady called Kitty Genovese in New York City. Upon investigation of this brutal murder, it was found that there were 38 witnesses. Not one person intervened. Not one person called the police. This poses the large questions. How and why do people opt to stay silent? Through their research, they found that there was two factors contributing to the bystander effect. The first, a diffusion of responsibility, where, unfortunately, the more people that are present to the injustice, suffering, even a crime, the less likely people are to intervene, stand it up, seek up. The easy response is to diffuse responsibility and assume someone else will deal with the injustice. The second part of the bystander effect is a term called social referencing. In simple terms, it is a monkey see, monkey do mentality, where if no one else intervenes, as humans, we're less likely to take action. We look around at our environment, and model those behaviours. When we think about the bystander effect, neuroscience backs this. It says that our brains have two systems, one for distress and one for sympathy. And in crowds, our natural default response is to stay silent, to diffuse responsibility, stay in the distressed state. But, unfortunately, this triggers a flight and freeze response, which makes it difficult for us to upset, to speak up and stay silent. So understanding that our natural desire, a default, is to stand by. I want you to know that it's important to understand our evolutionary tracks that hold us back from intervening from the standards. <coughs> because in any one moment, you have the power of choice. The choice to stay silent, or the choice to stand up, to be an upstander. If we think about upstanders, they're all amongst us, in our community groups, in our schools, in our workplace, throughout parks, history, and in our present environment. They're in the media, but more importantly, they're in this room today. Upstanders are courageous. They speak up, they take action and they fight the good fight. Let's take the example of the extraordinary women that led the Me Too movement. The Me Too movement was founded in 2006 by Tanara Burke. and became a global movement in 2017 following the conviction of Harvey Weinstein. To me, the movement amplifies the power of a single voice. How one courageous person can spark a ripple effect of change. Unfortunately, it also highlights the prevalence of sexual violence in our communities. In my work and in my book called The Upstander Leader, I dive into the topic and counteract the theory of the bystander effect. I couldn't just accept this as the status quo. I realized in my work that if we not only build awareness to the bystander effect, we can create change. But what about if we build capability to help people recognize their tracks? 
In my work, I'd rather focus on a concept called the Axander effect. Because the Axander effect has the power to influence change, a power to change the world. And in my work, I realized from working across organizations, industries, and community groups across the world, from Australia to Wales, I would hear common things. And I would hear language such as, I didn't know I was a bystander, or I didn't know what to do. And I realized throughout my work that people fall into one of four categories. The first is the unconscious zone. If you are in this zone, I want you to know that you are in a state of sleepwalking. You may be unaware or unconscious of bullying, harassment, racism, discrimination, and violence happening in your very community, in your workplace. I want you to know today is your call to action to look around your environment, to step into the extend zone, and break the chains of injustice. The second zone and language I hear people say is I feel uncomfortable. Often people are fine-tuned to see or witness injustice, but often they say things like, I don't know what to do. The easy option in the uncomfortable zone is to diffuse resp responsibility, to look the other way and put a resolution in the too hard basket. My call to you today is if you are uncomfortable and acknowledge suffering and injustice, think about how you can build your Axander toolkit so you can speak up Axander and stop injustice happening. And the third zone is the avoidance zone, the danger zone. Unfortunately, in my work, I see a lot of leaders in organizations and even country leaders hang out comfortably in this zone they're fine-tuned to the injustice, they have a level of awareness, and in fact, they have the capability, power, and influence to stop the injustice if they choose to. But they put the resolution in the too hard basket. Take my bullying example, reporting it 32 times, diffuse responsibility. So whatever bystander zone you may be hanging out in, my call to you today is to set into the Alexander Zone. The Alexander Zone is a new paradigm for humanity where collectively we can shape and change societies. Through so building awareness and capability, we have the power to collectively change the world. Imagine a world where empathy, ethics, and equality are at the bedrock of our DNA, where unity and community is chosen over injustice, silence, and suffering, where kindness is the new currency and lending a hand is the new status quo. Your voice has the power to change the world. Join me on my mission to build a generation of upstanders, one person, one voice, and one action at a time. Thank you.